Hello, Calc Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. And in today's lesson, we're going to be working with geometric series and specifically infinite geometric series. So the first part of this lesson will hopefully be a review, but I know some of you may not remember this stuff. You might have covered in pre-calc or way back in Algebra 1. It just depends on when you may have seen this. So what in the world is a geometric sequence? A geometric sequence is when you have a number and you are going to multiply by another number over and over again. For example, let's say I start with the number 4, and then the next number in the sequence, I'm going to multiply by 2. Actually, no, let's not multiply by 2. Let's multiply by 3. So 4 times 3 would give me 12. And then I multiply by 3 again, and that gets me to 36. And I multiply by 3 again, and that gets me to something bigger. Uh, that's uh, 108. Okay, so what am I doing each time? I'm multiplying by 3. So I go times by 3, times by 3. Okay, that's what a geometric series is doing. So if in this instance, the first term was a 4. My common ratio, usually we call it r, that common ratio is, in this case would be a 3. I'm multiplying each time by 3. So there's a way to have a, a, an nth term of a geometric sequence if you want to know. And the, the one that usually you'll see in textbooks is this one here in the middle where you have the very first term and you're multiplying it by r raised to the n minus 1. Okay, so that would be the, the most common way you see it. Another way might be where you have a zero term. So in other words, the term that would have been before the first term. I'll explain that in just a second. But then here, here's just another way. And that is you could really, you could say any term you wanted. You could say this, I want to start with a second term. If you do that, you would just have to say r raised to n minus 2. If I want to say I'm going to start with a fifth term, then your rule would have to be a uh, the fifth term times r raised to the n minus 5. That doesn't matter which term you start with as long as your r raised to the whatever it correlates with it to help you get that the, uh, this thing right here. So let me show you an example of how to use this. Here's a term, or excuse me, here's a sequence of numbers, 3, 6, 12, and so forth. I just want to come up with a rule that tells us what is the number that of uh, the sequence. So if I want to say the third number, I should be able to plug in a 3, and you get the answer of 12. So before we do this, let's figure out what the common ratio is, the r. How do I go from 3 to 6, and then from 6 to 12, and then from 12 to 24? So hopefully you see it, you're just multiplying by 2. Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, over and over again. So that means my r, in this case, would be equal to 2. That's my common ratio. So I know it's going to be 2 raised to the n minus 1 for this. Here it's just going to be 2 raised to the n. Here it's going to be 2 raised to the n minus 2. But what is the first term? The very first term was a 3. So it's 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. In this case, you do the second term, so it's just 6 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. Now let me show you how that works. Because if I plug in the number 1, plug in a 1 here, 1 minus 2 is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, times 3, you get 3. And that works here too. If you plug in the number 1, you get a negative 1, which means 2 to the negative 1 converts this to a 1 half. 6 times 1 half is again 3. So this one, how do you get this 0 term? It's the one that would have been back a step. If you could go backwards, so you would divide by 2 in that case. So what is 3 divided by 2, it's 3 halves. So in this case, it would be 3 halves. All right, so I just wanted to show you how that works real quick. In fact, this one is just kind of redundant, but I, you don't, we already learned how to do this. But let me just show you real quick. This one, because the numbers are getting smaller, that's what I wanted to show you here. This geometric sequence going this direction, how do you multiply something to get a 5? Well, I could divide by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Divide by 5 again, you get 1. So if you're ever not sure, what I always do is if you want to know what you're multiplying by, just go from this term over the previous term. 5 over 25, right? Like up here, if you just did 6 over 3, you'd get 2. 12 over 6, you get 2. Here, 5 over 25, that equals 1 fifth. So in this case, my r is 1 fifth. And that works for each of them. 1 over 5 is 1 fifth. 1 fifth over 1 would give you 1 fifth. So for all of these, it is 1 fifth is your r. So I know that for each of these. So then why don't you pause the video real quick and see if you can come up with these leading uh, coefficients for these rules here. And you should have come up with this. So hopefully you got those. This is multiplication right there. Uh, all right, again, this is uh, this. All of this is just review. So now let's begin the calculus part, where we're going to talk about the infinite series, and that is when you have uh, this situation. What does this equal? It equals 
A, so you have some beginning number that you're going to start with, and then you're going to add that same number times the common ratio. And then you're going to add that same number times the common ratio twice. So it's R times R. And then you're going to add the same number times R cubed and so forth until you get all the way up to N. And in this case, N is infinity. So we're going off to infinity. Now, as long as A is not zero, if A was a zero, then this whole thing's just like, that doesn't work like that. It's just going to be zero. So as long as that doesn't happen, this is considered an infinite series, a ge infinite geometric series. So how do we know if it's converging to a specific number, like it has, does it have a limit or does it not have a limit? Does it go off to infinity? So here's how we can tell. If you have a geometric infinite series, it's going to converge if R is less than one, the absolute value, excuse me, the absolute value of R is less than one. If the absolute value of R is greater than or equal to one, then it will diverge. So this is what we're looking for. When that happens, it converges. Okay, it already says that in the sentence. I just wanted to make sure I point that out here, that this is the thing you're looking for to see if it converges or not. If it does converge, this is what it converges to. Now, this is kind of cool. It's going to converge to this weird thing, arc, <laughs> arc, a r raised to the k all over one minus r. So what is all this stuff here? This a raised to the r over k, that is just the first term in the sequence. Or maybe I should say series as opposed to sequence because this is a series. So the a raised to or a times r raised to the k, that is just you take whatever number they're starting with. So it might be a zero, it might be one, it might be two, whatever that number is, you just plug it in. And so if this was a two, you'd plug a two in there, it would be a r raised to the two. Okay, so whatever that is goes in the top for the very first term, and that's all over one minus r. And that tells you whether what the uh, what the limit is, what the sum of this geometric series is. So let's try this out. When you see this, you often might would want to rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite this as three over one fourth raised to the n. This and this are equivalent. I'm rewriting it because it does help me to be able to see a little bit like what's the A, what is the R, and that type of thing. So next up, I'm going to write down, uh, I'm going to write down what my A, R raised to the K is. So what's my, my arc or my A, R raised to the K? That's the very first term. In this case, it's start plugging in a zero. So I do three over four to the zero. Four to zero is one. So this just equals three. So that's my very first term, three. And then I have to know what my R is. My R is a one fourth. And then I just do a check real quick and I'm gonna write this down just as a reminder to you. Since the absolute value of R is less than one, it's going to converge and I can go ahead and use this formula, which is take the first term. In this case, it's just a three. And that's all over one minus whatever my R is. My R is a one fourth, so I say one fourth. And then from here, you just simplify real quick. One minus one fourth is three fourths. That is the same thing as three times the reciprocal. And then that is a four. So four is the, the sum of this infinite series. You add up all of the terms here, this one right here, sorry. You add up all the terms of from zero to infinity and it's going to get you to the number four. Now, if this thing did, was not less than one, it would diverge and you wouldn't be able to answer this. You would just stop and say it diverges and there's no, uh, there's no sum. All right, let's try this one. This one's a little bit trickier because of all these extra n's going on. So this is how you do this. There'll be a couple of these in the practice. I'm gonna write this as three raised to the n times three to the first. See how in the numerator, these two things are equivalent. Three raised to the n times three to the first. I just broke it down. And then this is all over four to the n. Okay, so now what does that equal? Now you might be able to see, I'm trying to break this up so I can see my A and then my R raised to the N. So what is my R? It's three over four, three fourths. All right, so now what is the first term? A R to the K, what is my first term? It is, uh, plug in a, this one's a two, right? So I gotta plug in a two into this whole thing. So I could do either one. I could plug it in here or I could plug it in here. It doesn't really matter or to the first one. I'm just gonna use this very first thing right here. So three raised to the two plus one is three. So this is three cubed all over, that's a three right there. Three cubed over four squared. So that equals 27 over 16. All right, that's my first term, 27 sixteenths. And then the R is three fourths. And yes, this is less than one. So now I can keep going. Let me just write that down. The absolute value of R is less than one. So 
Check, I can keep going now. And now I use the formula. The first term goes on top, which is 27 over 16, all over one minus the R, three fourths. See here, one minus R. And then what does that equal? This is just working with fractions. I'm gonna have 27 over 16 divided by, and then, oh, I said three thir thirds. Hopefully you caught that, it's supposed to be three fourths. There, that looks better. And then one minus three fourths is just a fourth. So then that equals 27 sixteenths times the reciprocal of that, which is four. And then that reduces to 27 over, the four reduces with the 16, so four. 27 fourths is what this series converges to when you add them all up. All right, almost done. See, this is pretty simple. Now we're gonna use the same thing, but it's kind of like we're working backwards. We wanna say, uh, what's the R value that makes this equal 23? So I wanna say 23 equals, and then I'm going to set up my, my AR to the K, so that's just 17 R to the, now K in this case is a zero. So I'm gonna say R to the zero. And then on bottom, so that's the first term, and then on bottom I have one minus whatever r is. So I don't know what it is in this case. So now we're trying to solve for r. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by this denominator to both sides, and that'll give me 23 minus 23r equals, r to the zero is a one, so this just equals 17. Subtract the 23 over, 23r equals negative six, and then divide both sides by 23 and you get 20, uh, 6 20 thirds positive because two negatives. All right, so then that's, that is correct. R equals six over 20 thirds is the value of R that makes this thing equal 23. Now, if this number had been larger than one, then I would have to say that there's no value of R because if this was larger than one, then this thing would diverge. Hopefully that's making sense what I'm saying. Since it's less than one, we're good, that's the answer. But if it was a larger than one, I would have to stop and say it's not possible. You can't find a value of R because if this was bigger than one, it would be diverging. All right, and then the last thing is using a calculator to help you answer some of these questions. This here, you'll see some of these, these have been on the AP exam in the past, uh, and so I just wanna give you a couple of these in the practice, make sure you know how to do them. And so we're just gonna plug in a seven here, so that X is going to become the seven, because it's F of seven. So what we're going to do is, uh, it's really just the same thing we've done before, and that is, let's figure out what is A, R, to the k. What is that going to equal here? Well, in this exa example, it's sine squared raised to the 7 thirds, and then all of that is raised to the what? K the n. In this case, the n is a 3 because it's just do doing the very first term. All right, and then I plug that in my calculator. I already did this on the side here. So I plug all that into my calculator, and I get that, that is approximately 0.1429 uh, I'll keep going a few more, three, five, blah, 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 keeps going. I'm, I'm doing some more because what you would wanna do on your calculator is store it. So I'm gonna store this as, I'll just call it the letter A. Oh, let me fix something, hold on, before I keep going, let me change that, let's not store it as A, let's store it as B. I don't wanna write A because you might get confused with this A over here. Okay, so I'm just storing it as B and I'm gonna use it in my calculator, in that case. Now, next up, I need to figure out what is R. So R equals this inside here, inside the N. So that's just the sine squared of seven thirds. And that is approximately 0.5228 and a bunch of other numbers, and I'm gonna store that one. Let's just store that as the letter C. So now what that lets me do is I can now write out my uh, my formula and just use the calculator to help me get it. So the first term on top is gonna be my B over one minus R. In this case, R was my C. And so if I have stored those in my calculator, I can just plug this whole thing in and it gives me the answer this number here, 0 0.2995, and it goes on, but we can stop there, truncate it or round it. But I do wanna point out, you wanna be careful that you didn't round these numbers because if you rounded them, it will throw off your final answer. And you don't want your final answer rounded until the very end. So don't round on the intermediary steps. Okay, we've covered it all. Hopefully this lesson wasn't too bad for you. Rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.